looking at some of the stories from the Royal Rota from the spring of 2019. Would you know, would you know that there were allegations of a falling out at the time between the Duchess of Cambridge, as Kate Middleton was known at the time, and the Marchioness of Chumley, Rose Hanbury? This series does not set out to prove whether or not Will did or did not have an affair with Rose or whether or not Kate Middleton did or did not have a falling out with Rose. This is about a media ecosystem and a royal rota that all of a sudden lacked any curiosity. A UK tabloid industry that suddenly cared about publishing something before they had all the facts. It's about a firm that trots out the phrase, never complain, never explain, who seems to have done a lot of complaining and threatening with litigation to stop these stories or scrub them from the internet. This is my continuing look into the Royal Rota, who are supposedly given access to the British Royal family to keep the public informed. But if what they're doing is more of a cover-up or an extension of the British Royal family PR, who are they really serving? And is it the public? Before we dive into the timeline, a quick background on Rose. Rose was born Sarah Rose Hanbury. She was born in March of 1984. Her grandmother was a bridesmaid in Queen Elizabeth II's wedding. Before her marriage, she worked as a model and a researcher for conservative PM named Michael Gove. After a few months of dating, David Rock Savage, who is 23 years her senior, they announced their engagement two days before their wedding in June of 2009. Not hard to do the math here. They welcomed twin boys in October 2009 and then a daughter in 2016. The family resides in Norfolk, and this is about 4.4 miles from where William and Kate have their country estate. This is not a correlation, but it's not dissimilar to how Charles had a country home very close to where his mistress Camilla lived, also in the country. David and Rose and William and Kate all run in the same social circle known as the Turnip Toffs. I would have come up with a better name, but that's just me. This is a group of high-level prominent aristocratic friends. Let's move into the timeline of when this alleged rift or affair hit the media. So I'm looking at spring, specifically March 2019 to June 2019. On March 22nd, 2019, The Sun reports that Kate had a falling out with her friend Rose. This becomes the story of the rural rivals and the rumor that Rose and her husband were being phased out of the friend group. This was written by Dan Wooten, which is kind of surprising, but also, as you can see, I found this in the Wayback Machine because it has been completely scrubbed from the internet. It no longer exists. And why, when it makes no mention of an affair? Richard Kay comes out swinging in the Daily Mail on March 24th, 2019, with a nothing to see here article about this whole rumor. This line I found interesting though, quote, they are presented under serious headlines and if nothing else will be grist to the mill for the cause of republicanism, bringing a glow to the hearts of anti-monarchists everywhere. It's a curious statement. I mean, presumably his job is not to protect the monarchy. It's to report on the goings on. It's almost like he's saying we can't even look into this or report on this or anything like it because it will help anti-monarchists. On March 26, 2019, the UK Times food critic Giles Corrin tweets, yes, it is an affair. I haven't read the piece, but I know about the affair. Everyone knows about the affair, darling. He quickly deleted it, and a piece from the Daily Beast from April 2019 says that he was pressured into doing so. Do with that what you will. Because up to this point, this has just been a story about a rift between two girlfriends. As you can see from a March 27, 2019 article from the Daily Express, which was also scrubbed from the internet. It's not until April 4th, 2019 that an American tabloid in Touch Weekly goes in on the rumors. And then things start getting litigious. Quote, the Daily Beast further understands that at least one British publication had been served with legal warnings after publishing details of the rumors by the Royals' lawyer of choice, white shoe firm Harbottle and Lewis. They claimed in the letter that this was a breach into their client's private life and also privacy pursuant to Article 8 of the European Convention to Human Rights. I don't disagree. They deserve to have human rights, but it doesn't seem to be doled out evenly. Things quiet down for a bit until June 13th, 2019, when this article is published. The original article states that yes, Rose and William did have one or two suppers together while Kate was away, but of course Kate knew about it. Quote, and Kate was grateful that a good friend and neighbor like Rose was there to entertain William as a platonic friend. Weird choice of words, but okay. Next day, those sentences have been completely scrubbed. Again, not saying that these rumors are true, but it does kind of present as a doth protest too much. Moving on, if they weren't writing about this alleged rift and affair, what were they writing about? This will shock you. I'm going to break it up into three categories. The first one, Meghan Markle. Now, the Royal Rota wasn't completely out of line reporting on Meghan Markle. She was within weeks of giving birth to her first child. 
a few days after the Rural Rivals article comes out, there's this piece about me gain and Megan being mean to staff. This is just one example of an article that we see hundreds of times. There's talk about where she'll give birth and how she's snubbing tradition. Oh, and we got a peer sighting, Meghan Markle the social climber. The second category is relationship damage control. In early June, we start to see a lot of articles like this from Glamour, how Prince William and Kate Middleton are dealing with the rumors he had an affair. The whole idea is that it actually made them stronger. It forced them to reevaluate their relationship all as well. The same day that Rose Hanbury article about her having private suppers with William comes out, there is this article, Kate and Prince William snuck off for a secret afternoon tea date. They're going on dates. They're in love. Everything's cool. Then on William's birthday, Kate Middleton makes Prince William a birthday album featuring family photos and drawings by the kids to remind him of what's really important. Why does he need a reminder? Who knows? Final category is the changing in the relationship between the two couples and a supposed rift. Now it's okay to speculate on this rift between brothers, but not a potential rift between Kate and Rose. It's around this time that Harry and Meghan move out of Kensington Palace and they also split their comms teams from William and Kate's. Then there's this royal rift between the brothers that it seems like the papers either can't get to the bottom to or do not want to. Kate Middleton as peacemaker is another trope that we often see in the press. Allegedly, she told Prince Harry to give his brother an olive branch. Why? We don't know. All it says is, quote, a specific conflict has led to a deep and personal falling out that could not be diffused nor abated. Again, the timing of this is interesting. Obviously, Camilla Tomini is going to jump into the conversation. Camilla Tomini's interpretation is that Harry does not like to be sidelined by William, doesn't like to be in his shadow. Take that with a grain of salt. To put it all in perspective, let's look at a timeline where everything is in there. Before I show this timeline, recall, this is a small sample. I suspect if I actually built this out, you would see a disproportionate number of articles about Meghan Markle that are negative and less and less about William and Kate that is not positive. And you probably wouldn't see any more about this rift or this alleged affair from the Royal Rota because so much of it has been scrubbed from the internet. Pause to read. I color coded everything because type A Capricorn, you can see the dates where there are reports about splitting with the comms team. And then we go into when we start getting reports of an alleged affair. And then suddenly we start getting much more Meghan Markle stories. You start to see articles pop up about the alleged rift or affair. And suddenly we start getting Meghan Markle stories or positive William and Kate. And as you could see at the very bottom there, we also have Prince Andrew scandals coming to light. And who knows how long those were just bubbling beneath the surface, waiting to be exposed by the media. What I'm saying is there were potentially a lot of different stories that the British royal family did not want out there. And this would fit the pattern of using another royal, a lesser royal, a royal who's maybe getting too popular as a scapegoat to distract from other stories. But what's remarkable about this is not just the distraction, but the scrubbing of any information related to even just a rift between two women. Most of the articles that I showed you do not even mention an affair. So why go to the lengths to not only put an injunction on these stories and stop the speculation, but also remove them from the internet? Except of course, if you know how to use the Wayback Machine. So where does it stand with the turn up toffs now? It's not totally clear Rose has remained mum on the topic. I'm sure that was from the advisement of both people who work for her and also the firm. Rose has been included in state dinners since then and also at the memorial for Prince Philip in 2022. So whether things are all good or if it's to maintain the appearance of things being good or the fact that you can't simply kick aristocrats out of these circles, even if you are the future queen, which is a discussion for another video. I find this allegation interesting, not in terms of the allegation, but in terms of how the media responds and how the firm responds. It illuminates for me how the treatment of certain royals is not equal. And some could argue it's not supposed to be equal. One is the future king, others are not. But if you were, say, the spare, would you subject yourself to that kind of scrutiny? Or your wife? Or your children? I don't think so. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and remember, stay curious and keep pulling those threads.